Hey guys, this is Medicosis Perfectionalis. Welcome to my physiology series. Today's topic is the cytoplasmic organelles. So without further ado, let's get started. But first, what are these organelles? They are the mitochondria, lysosome, peroxisome, endoplasmic reticulum, the rough and the smooth, plus the Golgi apparatus. The cytoplasm contains organelles and other stuff. These are the organelles, as I've told you. In this video, we will discuss mitochondria and lysosomes, and in the next video, we'll discuss the endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi apparatus, and peroxisomes. Others, such as ribosomes, fat globules, glycogen, and secretory vesicles. I've told you before, mitochondria is the powerhouse, lysosome, the soldier, endosome, the delivery guy, rough endoplasmic reticulum, the translator, and the uber, smooth endoplasmic reticulum, the donuts, Golgi, the sorter, peroxisomes, the gem trainers. So let's start with mitochondria, the power plant or the powerhouse of the cell, produces energy in the form of ATP, adenosine triphosphate, has an outer membrane and an inner membrane and have infoldings of the inner membrane called cresti. What does the word mitochondrion means? Mitus means thread. Chondria means granule. So mitochondrion is like grain-like or something of that matter. Mitochondrion is the singular. Mitochondria is the plural. Mitochondria is a membrane-bound organelle, forms ATP, and also it's the killer of the cell. It releases enzyme to initiate apoptosis, also known as programmed cell death or cell suicide. This is different from cell homicide, which is necrosis. Necrosis is evil. Two membranes, outer membrane and inner membrane with an intermembrane space in between. It is semi-autonomous, which means mitochondria has its own DNA it replicates independently of the nucleus through the process of binary fission. It is cytoplasmic inheritance, also known as extranuclear inheritance. If the cell needs more energy, it will replicate its mitochondria. That's why cells with... So cardiac myocytes needs a lot of energy. They will have lots of mitochondria. Form follows function. Functions of the mitochondria are numerous, such as ATP production, electron transport chain, also known as oxidative phosphorylation, cell signaling, cellular differentiation. They control the cell cycle and the cell growth, also the cell death. Heat production, such as the brown adipose tissue, also known as thermogenin. Heme synthesis, which I've talked about in a previous video, so make sure to watch that video. Structure of the mitochondria, outer membrane, inner membrane, the infoldings of the inner membrane are called crestae, whatever is inside here is called the matrix. Between the outer and inner membrane is the inner membrane space. Mitochondria is semi-autonomous, it has its own DNA. Protons are constantly being pumped from the matrix to the inner membrane space. This creates proton motive force which leads to protons move through the ATP synthase, leading to synthesis of ATP through the electron transport chain. ATP formed in the mitochondria is going to leave the mitochondria to be readily available for the cell to use it for energy purposes. All of this process is called oxidative phosphorylation. The outer membrane forms a barrier between the cytosol and the mitochondria, contains enzymes, and it has pores such as the cell membrane and the nuclear membrane, etc. How about the inner membrane? It contains molecules and enzymes for electron transport chains, enzymes such as the ATP synthase. Cristae, they are infoldings of the inner membrane, they increase the surface area available for the electron transport chain. The matrix is where ATP is generated and contains the Krebs or TCA cycle enzymes. Don't forget, mature mammalian red blood cells have neither a nucleus nor a mitochondrion. That's why they produce less amount of energy. Hepatocytes, on the other hand, have more than 2,000 mitochondria per cell. Wow! Mitochondria produces most, but not all, of ATP for the cell. Mitochondrial DNA is similar to bacterial DNA. Mitochondrial DNA is inherited exclusively through the mother. 
When mom and dad were having fun, the sperm left its mitochondria outside of the ovum, entered the ovum to share by its half of the nuclear or of the genetic material combined with this ovum, but the mitochondria that is passed down through generations is only coming from mommy because the sperm left its mitochondria outside. Very cool. That's why mitochondrial diseases are transmitted from the mother to her offsprings and not from the father. Very big difference. In 1775, Richmond, Virginia, Patrick Henry shouted, Give me liberty or give me death. But each day the cell shouts to the mitochondria, Give me energy or give me death. Give me energy, by which I mean ATP. Give me death, by which I mean initiating apoptosis. Very cool. Now, after the mitochondria, let's turn our attention to the lysosome, the lord of destruction, your cell's digestive system. Lyso means lysis and zo means body. Lysosome, a membrane-bound organelle, has vesicles containing hydrolytic enzyme that digest waste products of the cell. Lysosomal membrane keeps the enzyme contained lest they should digest the cell because if they go and escape going outside of the lysosome, they will digest your mitochondria, your Golgi apparatus, your nucleus, etc. That's why the membrane of the lysosome, also known as the lysosomal membrane, is very vital. Nice. Where does the lysosome get its enzyme? from the rough endoplasmic reticulum because they are proteins. These enzymes work in an acidic environment inside of the lysosome. Hydrolytic enzymes work in acidic medium, the same concept as in the stomach acid. Lysosomes work hand in hand with endosomes. Lysosomes are formed by breaking off from the Golgi apparatus. The lysosome can digest stuff from outside of the cell through the process of endocytosis, we need the help of endosome for that, or from inside of the cell called autophagy with the help of phagosome. How do hydrolytic enzymes work? First, hydrolysis is the process of breaking down stuff in the presence of water. Water, of course, is hydrogen ions and hydroxyl ions, protons and hydroxyl. So hydrolytic enzymes will combine the hydrogen ions from water with part of the compound. So let's see that here is the compound. Let's combine the proton with this part and the hydroxyl group with this part. Now let's separate the two. Now we are digesting and breaking down the compound. Brilliant. So proteins by hydrolysis are broken down into amino acids, lipids, fatty acids, and glycerol. Carbs, break them down, you will end up with glucose. First, the lysosome will engulf this substance and then it will destroy it using its hydrolytic enzymes. Lysosome digests bacteria and other stuff, ingested food particles, cellular structure that are damaged. Let's say that the lifespan of the mitochondria has expired. Let's damage it to produce no mitochondria. So these damaged mitochondria are then digested by the lysosome to clean the debris. The process of endocytosis. Here is the endosome and here is the molecule. The endosome engulfs this molecule and the lysosomes come to digest the whole thing. In the next video, we'll talk about the endoplasmic reticulum the Golgi apparatus, and the famous peroxisome. So don't forget to subscribe, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, SoundCloud, Instagram, and please consider supporting this channel on Patreon to help me produce more videos in the future. Thank you so much for watching. This is Mythicosis Perfectionalist. As always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard.